Tom here from Lawrence Systems. I want to talk about solving a problem a lot of people seem to run into when they are self-hosting servers. And what happens in PFSense is you build a server internally in your network, and then you go through and set up a Let's Encrypt, for example, certificate and a fully qualified domain name, and you get it facing the world. So now you're hosting it, except when you try to access it internally. There's a couple different ways to do this. One of them is setting up proper NAT reflection so that when you hit the public IP address internally, it reflects back in and goes to the server. Another way and the way I prefer to do it is through host overrides. A couple prerequisites that you are using PFSense as your DNS server. If you are using something like Active Directory, you'll have to make those same DNS changes in Active Directory in the DNS server that you have Active Directory using, the Windows one, essentially. This is specifically for helping people who are using PFSense want to know how to do a host override so their fully qualified domain works properly internally and externally. Now, this does work with either a server that is independent that you built yourself, whether it be a single host or multi-host server, or if you're using HA proxy, wherever that IP address is, is where you'll have to point it to. In the case of HA proxy and PFSense, which I've done videos on, that would be the PFSense address. In the example we're going to use today, uh, it's a standalone server that we have. Now, what we've actually done is take lawrencesystems.com and tunnel it to be an internal server. So bear with me here uh, for this example, but essentially you'll see that we have an IP address of 192.168.3.9 internally, and that IP address is going to represent lawrencesystems.com. And yes, I actually have it tunneled, so lawrencesystems.com does respond on that IP address. I mean, we're going to put the host override in, and... Before we get there, though, I want to start with the DNS Resolver documentation. There are many more features in DNS Resolver than we'll be covering today. We're specifically going to be talking about the host overrides. But yes, there is a lot more you can do with it. I will leave a link to the documentation, which is really easy to find because you just go over here and can click the little question mark, which brings you to the documentation. All right. Now, the host override section right now is empty. So before we do anything, let's uh, look up where lawrencesystems.com lives. Dig 192.168.88.1. That's the IP address we have here for our PFSense. We're behind it with this laptop that I'm on. So lawrencesystems.com, dig, and it resolves to the proper public IP address. And if we are not inside this network, that would be great. But as I said, for this demonstration, we're assuming lawrencesystems.com actually lives internally at 192.168.3.9. So when we do the dig, our goal is to resolve it to that address. And now let's cover something really quick. This is OpenSSL. And this is where some of the troubles sometimes come in. Once you're dealing with certificates, certificates have to have the name, the server name sent by your browser matching the certificate that responds. It actually isn't tied to IP address. It specifically is tied to the server name sent and the certificate offered. This is actually how it works as well when you have a website serving up multiple different websites on one single IP address. It uses the server name to determine what site you're going to get or what certificate you're going to get. And hopefully you are using a certificate and everything should be done securely. Um, it's a little bit simpler, obviously, if you're not. Same rules apply for the host override, but um, you don't have to worry about the TLS part of it. What we're going to do here is open SSL client. We're sending the server name, lawrencesystems.com, to host 192.168.3.9443. And this is just an example to show you that it pulls the right certificate. So we go here and it does return. CN equals lawrencesystems.com, and uh, there's our let's encrypt CN equals three. Now, just so you know, if we put something different and we'll put like not lawrencesystems.com, it will not return the proper name. This is what happens essentially when you go to the website and put in something like, uh, and we'll open up Firefox for this because that way nothing's cached. HTTPS 192.168.3.9, and we get a certificate error because it's not sending a certificate that matches the server name. Server name we sent was 192.168.3.9, and it's not the expected certificate, so we end up with a certificate mismatch and that error that people are used to seeing. Let's go ahead and create an entry. So the host, we leave blank. Domain is lawrencesystems.com. IP address 192.168.3.9, description 
LTS host override. And then we also want to go ahead and we're going to do www as well. And hit save. And then apply. So now, lawrencesystems.com equals 192.168.3.9 and www.lawrencesystems.com is 192.168.3.9. Let's go ahead and test. So we go here and we do the dig at 192.168.88.1, which is our local IP address of PFSense. Hey, look, it responds with that. Let's put a www in front of it. Also responds like that. What if we did an external address? 9.9.9.9. So if we hit quad 9, it gives the proper answer of 143, 198, etc. So now if you're outside of your own network and not using PFSense for DNS resolution, no problem. It's going to resolve properly, but internally it's going to override and put you at the local server's address, which is that 3.9. So let's actually go there now. All right, do a refresh and then open up the web console down here. And you can see the remote IP where there's a lot going on here. My website has a lot of things on it, but you see where lawrencesystems.com is being served from 192.168.3.9 down here at the bottom. And that's it. Now I did have to uh, pause a minute and refresh a couple times because it takes a little while because Firefox wanted to cache the old IP address. You may run into that. You may have to reboot some hosts. Uh, some of them will hold on to despite PFSense having a new DNS entry, if they've looked the site up before, you may not see it immediately. Um, that's one of the reasons I was looking to see which remote IP it was pulling up down here to make sure it was pulling up the right one and that the demo was working as expected. It's really that simple to do these host overrides and override any site that you want to equal that. Now, I mentioned multi-site hosting. And for example, if you had a server that supplies multiple sites based on the server name, you could use the same IP address for return with different domain entries. So lawrencesystems.com resolves as 192.168.3.9, but you could also have some other website.com resolve as that as well. So it's just as many host entries as you want. And of course, you can add extra aliases underneath in case you have some other ones that also resolve there because, well, it works the same way with subdomains as well. Generally speaking, you just need the two for a fully qualified domain name. And yes, this will work if you have like mydomain.dynamicdns or whatever you may be using if you're not using a fully qualified domain name that you own, but something like a dynamic DNS type of service. It does work with that as well. Uh, I'll leave a link over to the documentation from PFSense on this. It's a really simple thing to do, but it will solve you a lot of headache just to throw that host override in there and override it so it points at the local server as opposed to the public one. And this will solve all those little bugs that seem to come up. And this is a popular topic in my forum and a popular support topic that just comes up in general, I find. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.